Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter. Welcome to another video. This time, actually, welcome to my work laptop. So um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, you probably read the title of this video. Um, it's all about open source and uh, public, private uh, repositories, sharing your code. Uh, but more importantly, uh, open source and uh, possible open source projects in a business setting is what uh, I want to address here. The, the why, the what, um, and, and uh, things like that. So uh, first of all, um, let me introduce you to a little project here called Interview App. Um, Interview App is a little application uh, for interviewers when they try to interview uh, their interviewees, <laughs> um, new candidates for uh, developer position, let's see, or any position, uh, like a technical position. Um, this app is going to allow you to prepare questions in advance from a a bigger uh, sort of repository of possible questions categorized by technology or difficulty, etc. Um, and of course, the ability for you to um, look at it while in, on, you know, in the interview and maybe rate the candidate or uh, perhaps show them a snippet of a code uh, through the app or uh, similar features. While, of course, being able to replace any question with a uh, sort of randomly generated one from the same category or to let the, the app generate a follow-up question if you're interested more uh, uh, in how this uh, person sort of knows uh, a certain topic. Now, that's great, right? What's greater is that this application um, is public. Uh, we have our repositories, bo both the backend, the API, and, oops, sorry, I'm punching the mic, uh, the backend and the frontend here as a UI, um, open. Now, what's interesting about this project is that there are people, there's a stable team working on it uh, basically full time. Now, that's great. That's actually really cool because this um, and, and I would love to use it in my uh, in my videos to demonstrate clean architecture. I know you guys have been asking about clean architecture, and this is a great example because we're um, the, the idea with this project is that we're trying to actually follow best practices to do as best of a uh, of a job as, as uh, we possibly can. So that's great. So we're going to use this definitely. We're going to keep keep an eye on uh, this uh, this sort of project and we're going to see how it de develops and we're going to speculate. Actually, I sort of have like internal insight into like <laughs> the actual uh, team's reasoning, but we can sort of uh, look at all the different decisions and, and why they were made and what le where it leads. So I think that's going to be a great case study as it's happening kind of. Um, of this like project, which again, I implore you to go right ahead and, and take a look and, you know, peek around. This is, it's, it's at its very early stages. There's no, uh, I, I don't think, uh, deployment are uh, set up yet, but that really actually isn't, um, the topic of this video. I would love to sort of go into the architecture, uh, in the next video, but here now, what I'd like to talk about is, huh, open source in a business setting. Because um, look, um, we're used to traditionally uh, going to work and work on working on a uh, proprietary software, right? We're used to, um, you know, you not being able to to show anyone uh, any of the code that you've written at work, or um, you know, God forbid, share bugs or or vulnerabilities with people, right? And that makes all perfect sense. Of course, this is all uh, perfectly fine. I think unless you have some maybe moral concerns or uh, if you have certain beliefs that sort of go against proprietary software altogether, um, I think it's fairly fine. It's okay. You're being paid to do that. It's it's all right. You're performing your craft. Uh, you're embittering yourself. It's great. But here now, um, but, but the thing is, it's like, does everything need to be proprietary? And, and if a software would benefit, and we're going to talk about the different benefits, um, from open sourcing, shouldn't they? Is, isn't that a, a decent um, way forward? We're going to talk about all the different concerns and why it might not be a great idea and uh, how to address uh, all these issues. Um, so I'm going to start with something that's uh, pretty difficult or that, that I think a lot of people are confused about. Um, a lot of people don't understand what open source really means, what it is, and how you define open source. 
Um, I've seen cases where people simply thought, and I'm not like trying to bully them or anything. I'm just saying that it's something I've genuinely seen um, people be confused about. Maybe uh, the issue is um, somewhere else. Maybe it's not the lack of, I don't know, transparent or like information about open source software or whatever. But I've seen people think that um, simply having a, um, a project or repository on GitHub makes it an open source uh, software. It doesn't. Even, well, first of all, especially when it's a private repository, um, if you have a private GitHub repository, it is not open source software, um, it's still your own proprietary thing. Now, a difference could be, um, well, we'll get to that, sorry. Now, you might say, well, what about public repositories? This repository is public, surely it is open source software. It is not. Now, um, how come? Well, um, let's actually take a look at um, GitHub's open source guide. Um, this sort of talks about all, you know, everything open source. And here they have a what and why of open source. And uh, in this section called um, what does open source mean, they specifically say uh, they state some benefits or some uh, sort of things that can happen to an open source uh, piece of software. But they also say these permissions are enforced through an open source license, right? So here's the thing. Um, unless you have an open source license, it is not really an open source software, right? It's not a, because you, you, you basically take this, uh, you sort of label the, the software based on the license. Now, we don't, is there a license file here? It is, there isn't. Uh, so what does that mean? What, what is this? Um, well, on GitHub, no license, um, well, actually with basically any copyright, <laughs> copyrightable thing, um, it by default, um, you basically have the exclusive copyright, right? So this, technically speaking, is a, it's a proprietary uh, application, or at least it has open source elements. It has the source of it is open, but, in, but it's not like open source as in like the label, the, you know, open source, um, whatever authority here, uh, the open source initiative type sort of uh, uh, software, right? If you wanted to, uh, you can pick one of the licenses that are sort of open source approved, which is one of these uh, GPLs, you know, Apaches, um, that sort of a thing. Uh, you might want to now, now the, the question can be like, which license could, do you want to you want to pick, right? Maybe you even want to write your own if you want to put specific limitations. Maybe if you care about uh, free uh, Libre software, maybe you're going to pick something like a GPL. Or if you just don't care, um, no, not don't care. I mean, if you want to make it as easily, uh, you know, reusable or, you know, you want people to do whatever they want with it, they just, the only sort of restriction is a no warranty, so they can't come to you if something breaks. Um, it, that would be an MIT license. It's a very pop popular one on GitHub, which basically says, hey, do whatever you want with it, but I'm not responsible for whatever happens. Um, so if you sort of come back to this example, um, this really isn't an open source project, but but we talk that it is open source like. Um, and I think when a lot of people talk about open source, they mean open source like. They don't really mean the definition, right? So, um, and again, you know, I might be convoluting things or I might be completely wrong in, in some cases. And of course, uh, uh, the, the point uh, of sort of this ramble isn't for me to sort of like, uh, you know, push my definitions of open source. Oh, that really is an open source. That is. I'm, I'm simply um, um, defining the terms that we're going to use to to discuss larger things, right? Because if we disagree on, the, on what open source even is, then we cannot have a productive discussion about if it is the right thing to do or not, right? So we're clarifying terms. When I say open source software, I mean software under an open source license. When I say open source like software, I mean software that, which, uh, you know, sorry, software that has its source open to the public, right? That's what I mean by open source like. So by that logic, this, the interview app is a, an open source like um, software. And that's great. We can build on top of that. Now, um, 
another thing that so so now we sort of know uh, where we are. Um, let's address some of the issues, um, some of the the some of other uh, misconceptions. For example, um, just because this um, software is open source or open source like, um, does not mean that you have to host it and that you are responsible for having the hosted version public. You're not. Open source does not mean public deployment. You can still have this application be completely open source um, and then host it maybe internally or maybe on your private VPN or whatever, right? You don't have to commit to a public um, release. That's that's very important to mention, right? Because people could could think, well, we're going to have to make it public. We're going to have to like, how do we deal with traffic? What's in it for us? How do we monetize it? Right? That's those will be common concerns. But for an internal project like this, um, that that's not really an issue. Uh, you don't have to deploy it uh, for uh, anyone out there. They can do that on on their own, really. Uh, well, if it is an open source, like a licensed. Uh, application not if it's in this state you cannot actually use it um we're, weirdly enough you can just look at it and as a, as a member of the public you can just look at it and maybe contribute um uh, issues and, and and pull requests that's about it really um interestingly enough that's like a weird you know middle ground between like proprietary and, and open source software but hey um sorry that, that's a tangent now again um Another sort of common issues issue might be um, where people look at it and they go, well, that's not really, you know, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to be a better engineer for the proprietary development that I'm going to do most of the times. I'm not willing to learn an, an, an open source or open source like style of development because um, I don't think I'm going to use those skills in my proprietary um, development. Let's address that uh, issue. And I mean, that's a valid issue. It's like, oh, well, why would I try something that I'm probably not going to do anymore? Or, you know what I mean? Like uh, that, that I maybe don't even have any interest in. Well, in those cases, well, let's have a hypothetical, right? Well, actually, it's not much of a hypothetical because <laughs> it kind of like is real. Um, imagine you're working on a proprietary piece of software for a client. Um, you have a GitHub repository. It's private. Um, you have you track your issues in GitHub. Uh, you maybe use even the wiki to like document certain things, right? Now, that is a proprietary application. Just because you have it on GitHub, we talked about it. Just because you don't have it on GitHub does not even make it open source like. That is just outright proprietary. Absolutely proprietary. <laughs> um, so. And if you so you work maybe like as a team of a couple of developers, maybe you have QA, uh, maybe you have a, a scrum master, a PO, uh, you're like a full set, right? In this case, that's standard proprietary development. You have meetings, you have sprints, you know, good on you. Now, let's say you change uh, the visibility of the repository from private to public. What's going to change? Well, for your development effort, nothing. Nothing is going to change. Nothing is changed or removed. Um, the only the, potentially there could be added things on top of that, right? Such as maybe someone's going to maybe one of your, uh, you know, one of your uh, clients or one of your customers in this case or your clients customers, and maybe they're going to open an issue about a bug that you know that they kind of don't like, right? Or maybe someone, some really nice member of the public is going to pull request a, an interesting change. Now, again, this is something that you can manage that's absolutely under your control. You can disable pull requests. You can even disable issues, if I'm not mistaken. But that's like that kind of like bypasses the entire uh, point of you know, kind of having it public. Uh, but in an open source like environment, you don't have to you don't have to address those if someone opens an issue and it's something that you won't fix or you have planned in a different sprint or whatever you can just ignore that and i think your scrum master would sort of handle that right or someone periodically sort of goes through the issue and answers questions or whatever right which by the way is going to um reflect positively on the cust on the customers right they're going to be like oh yeah like my feedback matters or whatever 
Uh, but you might be like, well, actually, we have like a tech support uh, staff members who are supposed to sort of take these uh, these calls, right? Or whatever reason, for whatever reason, you may just close those issues. You may just like not really uh, consider them. For pull requests, um, again, this might be something that uh, you might be receptive towards. Uh, you might encourage it or you might just like outright ban it. Uh, that's why we have uh, documents, two documents here. Of course, read me. Uh, but there is a, a contributing guide which should really outline how these things are handled. Right? So in an, in an open source like, uh, as opposed to a traditional proprietary, you have a couple more pieces of documentation really specifying your expectations um, and your way of handling things, right? So that nobody can, you know, so that nobody feels... Uh, I don't know, like bad that they put effort into your software and you just rejected the, the the PR, right? Here, for example, in this interview, in the AP, uh, on the API side of the interview app, it's like we we have our policy uh, regarding finding bugs. You know, clearly, um, Jacob, the product owner here, um, wants us to open a GitHub issue, right? Great, right? That's how you, maybe maybe our policy is. Could you please refer to our um, customer support instead, right? Because we're not really, that's not what we do here. Yeah, sure, you can do that. Um, and just not allow um, any issues. Um, someone has to go through the issues, of course, and maybe close the, the ones that are irrelevant, but that rarely happens. Rarely happens. Unless you're a very popular project like Roslyn, you know what I mean? Um, you don't, and, and even then, like Roslyn, in Microsoft is a great example of a, of a of a giant huge thing, Roslyn compiler, um, being managed, right? Being open source, taking open source contributions while still having a core team paid, you know, to work on this project mo for most of their days, right? And again, you know, so so you can sort of read read more sort of things and stuff here. Um, this contributing uh, document talks about you know whether we like our policy regarding issues, your policy regarding merge pull requests, um, and of course uh, maybe some code style or any other sort of things you you may have here, right? So this contributing document. Um, there sometimes there are some other other uh, you know. So su supplementary documents like uh, code of conduct, um, to sort of you know talk about how we uh, behave and stuff, you know. Um, so that's that's one thing, right? So really, but but my point being here, there's not much that that really changes. You still develop in the traditional sprint, you know, Scrum way. Um, you still have the a core team that that is responsible, the maintainers team that is responsible for the development and the continuation and still course corrects, like, you know, you know, still sort of picks where this software is uh, and which direction it's going. And of course, you still have a product owner who has ultimate decisions over the, the application, right? So nothing changes. You only get added benefit of more eyes on the code, which that's my very next point. Uh, for example here, this is a beautiful, beautiful um, article from 2006. It's nothing new. It's not like, oh, you look at you youngsters with your Node.js wanting to be <laughs> open source and stuff. Um, which says, uh, Linus is law. Uh, which I don't think it's, whatever. <laughs> I was not at this as, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Many eyes make all bugs shallow. I, If I remember, I'm going to include this in... Uh, the description, it's a really, really beautiful um, article um, that, yeah, I, I urge you to um, uh, to read through. Um, the thing is, it is exactly what, what it says on the tin, right? Um, the more people look at a piece of code, you know, the, the sort of uh, easier it is to, to spot issues, spot them early, uh, debug them, uh, etc. Well, that wasn't even, that was just like a little tangent, sorry. Let me address address other possible issues you might have or, or worries that you might have as a person considering their, uh, you know, business project uh, going open source. Um, and for example, let's actually drop down to the developer level, right? 
you're a comfortable proprietary developer that wants to write proprietary software for whatever reason, and now you're assigned this this open source project. You might have a couple of uh, a couple of uh, worries or fears um, that actually everyone going into open source kind of has. Uh, I still have some of those, but I know they're irrational and sort of like uh, avoid them. Um, so, for example, um, you might be afraid uh, to that, that you, you might be afraid that you're going to make a mistake. You're going to commit a connection string to like a production database, or you're going to uh, leak some secret, some token, some password, or whatever. Um, that is a justified fear. First of all, you might you might say, well, and on a, in a, in a, propri a proprietary environment, maybe I do that, and we notice it. Like, first of all, there's no immediate damage done, um, so maybe we notice it, and then I can sort of clean it up later. It's fine. Um, I mean, hate. I mean, for, let, let's get ev the, the thing that everyone knows out of the way, and that's well, it's not okay even in a, a proprietary setting. But like, okay, that's just we all know that, right? But Peter, let's be let's be honest. That is a genuine, uh, genuine fear because if I do it in a public, uh, in an open source like uh, repository or an open source repository, I can um, that there's going to be a lot more damage. Maybe someone's going to uh, copy it, and now we have like maybe they're going to. Just delete, drop our tables or something, right? Uh, or worse, they're not gonna even like tell you. They're just gonna secretly, uh, you know, get a data dump and uh, whatever, uh, ransom you or just leak it. So, of course, this is a concern. This is a concern in any application. And here's the thing: I think just uh, running away from open source or open source like um, because of a fear like this is um, suboptimal because you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, you're not really addressing an issue. You're just taking one of the concerns and making it a deal breaker. But let's be honest, this is it's a it's a problem, right? Um, a fear is a problem. And you as a software engineer, you're a problem solver, which means you can attempt to solve the problem with tools and programming and ingenuity. You know what I mean? So here's the thing, problem. I'm afraid I'm gonna commit secrets. Solution, well, um, we have code reviews, uh, so hopefully your peer catches it. Well, that's not enough because people make mistakes. Okay, well, we have CICD pipeline that already tries to build and, uh, and test your application. Maybe we can put it in the CICD, right? Maybe we can check pattern match every file for like certain patterns or whatever, right? Maybe we can set rules like that. Okay, well, who knows, maybe there's going to be like outside of the scope. Well, we have code quality static code analyzers, such as SonarCloud, which we do have on this on this project. SonarCloud, basically, it's a, it's a static code analyzer, and basically reads your code as opposed to running it, it reads it, tries to like understand and finds like common mistakes and like code smells and stuff, right? Brilliant tool, free, really. A free for, <laughs> for, uh, it says, open source, uh, it actually says public repositories, which see, they, they dodged the whole open source question. It's free for public repositories, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I understand. Um, so, so in this case, you can. It already has some uh, pattern matching. I think by default, checking for passwords and and uh, common tokens, right? So, Sonar Cloud might catch that, right? And then, what if it still happens? You still leak somehow. It goes through to develop and through to. Like production, it probably doesn't matter. There's, there will be a deployment uh, with different uh, keys and credentials, but when you get it into de development, or somehow you still commit it, or you might say, "Well, but I even if if the CI/CD catches it, I still have it on my branch, and that branch is still public." Um, that and that's reasonable. As soon as you notice that an issue like that happens, and that should be like that should be with anything. That's not even like a like a controversial idea. As soon as you think that a connection string has been exposed to whatever, even if it's a private repository, really, on any branch, you scrub it first of all from Git, uh, like not just undoing, reverting the chain. It's a common mistake. Um, you'd be surprised how many connection strings are still in histories of projects, even if they're not currently there. Like in the history, in the Git history, they're still there. Um, you have to scrub it properly. Um, that's one thing. And then change the connection string. 
Like if you suspect that any of it could could have happened, change it. Those keys are changeable for a reason. Just change it. Um, have a process to do that, right? And move on, right? So again, that's a that's a problem that is real, but it has it has prevention, and it has um, immediate actions, right? has checks put in place to not do it, and if you still do it, there are methods of handling it. It's not doom and gloom. Not to mention, to be perfectly honest, and it's like the rule number one of any open source, unless you're like one of the big tech companies, nobody cares about your project. <laughs> nobody cares. Um, and people who do care, they're like a really, really small uh, fraction of, uh, of uh, developers. But now here's the thing, um, project type also dictates uh, whether it makes sense to open source or not, um, or be open source like. Um, for example, if it's something internal that maybe processes or calculates people's salaries or uh, handles employee data, yeah, maybe you want to keep that one proprietary. Like, yeah, understandable. If it's mission critical, uh, yeah, sure. Um, even though you could still architect it in such a way where the business logic is completely independent from the platform, so you can open source the platform and not the business logic. But then again, maybe too much effort, right? So, but for an, for an interview app like this, it's an interview app. The only data there is the questions <laughs> and maybe some potential, you know, someone making a group of questions. That's like, that's the data. Right. Not to mention the particular. This doesn't ship with uh, with the questions. It's just the platform. Right. So you have your own database like in prod somewhere like in a deployment process that might be handled through GitHub Actions. Right. But also is locked uh, so that only uh, the project maintainer can deploy it or whatever, or maybe only a certain approved parts or it's auto deploy, but only on like main or whatever. Or maybe you have different environments with different branches, right? And those get auto-deployed. The deployment is completely outside of the scope. The, the deployment is already private. That's yours. Uh, that is your instance of the software, right? So you have your own database uh, with your own data. Um, and it has nothing to do with public here. Public won't be able to access that, right? So again, you know, no worries there. I mean, if you set up your CICD pipeline well, so that it gets the appropriate credentials from the appropriate authorities and stuff, it gets the connection string properly and stuff. Um, it should be the responsibility of the CICD pipeline it shouldn't even be here, like in your repo, right? So it's a different step altogether. So you really shouldn't even get to a situation where you commit like a connection string. <laughs> but hey, maybe for your test environment you do or something, I don't know. But hopefully you sort of get you. Hopefully you're starting to sort of get this idea that um, the vulnerability um, um, argument not really doesn't apply as much for, especially for a project like this, right? Which is just a tool, right? It's not like uh, it's going to introduce a severe vulnerability that's going to like uh, attack an internal. Um, internal uh, network or, or something, right? It's just it's just an ASP.NET web app with a React front end. Um, so, all right, so that's one. Sorry, I'm, I keep rambling about this this issue. Um, let's move forward because we have uh, a bit more to, to cover. Um, so another thing is um, that that's a very common uh, fear that, of course, I empathize with. Um, and um, I try to help people get, get over this um, as much as possible. Um, and that's, um, it's just a, a fear of being shamed or judged, right? Um, imposter syndrome is real. Um, burnout is real. We have bad days. Uh, we like argue with our, with our spouse and, and then, you know, we have a shitty day at work and we write horrible code. Nobody can write clean code the first time. We all write horrible spaghetti stuff, but then we kind of mold it into something structurally uh, reasonable. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows it all. Everyone, like everyone makes stupid mistakes. All right. I can't even remember what an int is. 
a lot of the times. That's uh, I think that's a stretch, but sometimes you go, hey, you go like you have that moment, that brain fart where you look at those three letters. You end what? What do you? Oh, oh. <laughs> but it's like, see, that's hey, that's a that's me being vulnerable. I'm not smart. That's I, I think that should be clear. <laughs> Anyone who watched more than two of my videos knows. Oh, if anything, Peter is not smart. <laughs> But you know, I I try to put like training wheels so that I don't I don't fall over my with my bike and break my head. <laughs> All right, so enough metaphors. I'm sorry. Um, see, this is why you should listen to these videos in like a two times speed. I'm sorry I ramble. Um, so that's the that's the fear of being shamed and judged. So how do we? Again, it's a problem. We're problem sol solvers. How can we solve this? Um, the, one of the solutions that that um, of course you need to uh, you need to understand is uh, reassurance you are it's fine it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to to like write horrible code it's fine right first of all uh, second of all anyone who's going to shame you for anything you do on a public repo or open source like repo like this um is is going to just like shame you has no place on github and you know in our community of course and they're not engineers worth their salt. Um, that's the first thing, right? It's okay. You people are being dicks, and that's the internet. It's not an attack on you specifically. And honestly, in my GitHub career, I have not seen once anyone go, "Oh, you like actually attack anyone," you know. And I've seen some slightly large projects. Um, Everyone wants, uh, has this, the same goal, and that is to uh, further this software, to learn and to get better, right? We want to build amazing things, and uh, that should reflect it. So that's the first thing, but there is a real issue. It's like, Peter, yeah, but still. Like, I'm afraid that someone's going to look at it and be like, oh, this is, oh, this Peter guy, who's that, you know? And they're going to follow them and harass them. It's going to look at my other repositories. And they're going to hate them. I'm going to go on my YouTube and spam me and stalk me. And uh, we're going to check my live stream that doesn't even work anymore. Uh, they're going to go through all of these links and I'm going to get harassed because someone doesn't like the software that I work on. Because they, they, found a, they find a bug and they trace it. They git blame it on me specifically. And then she's going to hunt me. So um, as a proponent of uh, privacy and security, um, if you feel like that's some that's your uh, that's part of your threat model, um, have a new GitHub account with an anonymous name, like a randomly generated name, without any picture. Use a uh, an alias email. Um, you can even hide the email completely in your GitHub settings. Do that and use that account only for this work repo, and. That's a problem solved, really. But you've got to address these issues. You can't just look at it and be like, well, this is impossible because, oh, uh, man, you know, people people are going to hate. It's like, you know, you know why people like like us three? Uh, well, actually, well, I don't know about Thomas, but um, uh, us three specific is my, my uh, friend Jake and, and Phil. You, you guys have seen uh, Phil's uh, contribution in the VRC uh, project. We do that because we like to flex. We like to we like to go oh look at look at me being all productive and stuff and look at look at all my repositories Phil is great by the way it's like shout out to to my guy Phil um, definitely go check out his uh, his repos he's got some good stuff there good stuff like Mongo example MongoDB beautiful stuff and of course Jacob is like good old good old, is, I'm sorry I, I hate like how it uh, turned into just uh, uh, flexing my coworkers <laughs> no but we're, we're see but like we do that because we choose to right. If you're a new contributor to this and you don't you don't like that, you can, you know, of course, you can just uh, have an anonymous GitHub account, right? If you don't want to be associated with it. Um, and that's a problem solved. Now, um, we did address um, the issue of, oh, but it's not like a real proprietary project. Uh, I'm just going to summarize it one last time. There is nothing different between an open source and an open source like project and a proprietary uh, project. You still have a core maintenance team who works on a standard agile basis. Nothing is different. You can on top of that, you have the opportunity 
and the choice really to interact with these issues and pull request options, right? And you can define the scope of it again in your contribute, contributing document, right? Now, so those are like the, the some of the worries sort of hopefully dispelled. If you, again, if you have any other like interesting, you know, um, worries or potential issues episode first of feel free to join our discord link in the description feel free to share um, we might have a part two of this because i think this is an important topic uh, but it's maybe not discussed as uh, as often as it uh, could be um, let's talk about positives though first of all you attract talent as a developer i look at this i look at the uh, the application i see that every, like everything's the way it should be you know there are actions there are pipelines if I look at the if I look at the pipelines, they seem to do uh, the right thing. They have analyzers. Uh, steps are the Sonar Cloud. They're uh, building. We have probably run tests as well, unless it's built and analyzed. Probably. Oh, it's going to be part. Of There's e coverage report, open cover. As a developer, I look at it. I go open cover, dude. Like, damn. Like, whew, I get a little excited seeing uh, open cover. Ooh. That's some spicy stuff right there, you know? As a developer, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, again, I, I see common stuff. I see uh, well-designed README. Uh, I see people are not too serious about it, you know? They're they're happy for any help, you know? That's beautiful, you know? And I can sort of read more about, about these things, so I'm likely to... And I, then again, I look at the uh, architecture, about which we're going to talk uh, in the following uh, couple of videos. And I, I look and I see application don't end-to-end -end tests. Oh, you know, oh, Nelly, it's, it's real good. This is, this is, I get excited. So you're going to attract people who um, are talented. You're going to attract talented people who want to do, uh, almost like you're going to kind of attract craftspeople, people who want to not just do their job and do it right, you know? Uh, you so so that's that's one thing uh, attracting talent. Uh, another thing we kind of talked about is showing your work. You want to flex. You can be like, oh, look at that. You know, hey, it's like I'm I'm working on this project. It's pretty cool. Um, one one thing for me is that um, I can stream this. I can actually stream real work on a real project. Further sort of gathering maybe more talent or which I think is one of the biggest and most important points for me personally. Um, it gives me the ability to teach the next generation of programmers, share it with you guys, and share an actual real production-ready uh, project because we have real sprints. I mean, we do have a board here with everything. Like, we do, we have real sprints, we have real QA. I don't know what, like, a, a real QA as opposed to what, like, unreal QA? Uh, like, but, like, it's, everything is proper, you know? Sprint planning, as you can watch it so we can talk about it. We can actually have, like, a real in-depth case study. And you can look at it, too. You can sort of, you know, keep track of this. Um, now, one thing that I sort of want to mention about this project in, in particular is... Um, it's sort of started, it's, it's starting. Um, so there, there's a, uh, a, a bit of, uh, setting up to do, and that's going to take some time, but sooner or later, the plan is that we're actually going to, um, we're actually going to outsource some of the, some of the work to maybe I can, you know, fix some of the issues, my free time, you know, on a stream or whatever, or maybe you guys can. And see, it's just, a like, that it's real, you know what I mean? And we'll see, we'll see how, how it goes, you know? And I think that's a that's a great thing. Of course, those issues are probably not features or, or anything, you know, it's probably like a couple of bug fixes that you can sort of take care of if you, if you feel like it, or you can report your own bugs or you can host it. Maybe we can have like a public, maybe I can like publicly host uh, an instance of this just to show you guys like how you could go about like taking a, uh, a project like this and maybe actually setting it up for yourself. Right? I know we actually have a Docker instance and we're uh, using Azure, but um, maybe we're going to go, okay, so how, how, how do we take this and put it on like a VPS or whatever, right? Uh, really practical knowledge uh, and real knowledge. That's the important thing, that it's real. Um, 
And so those are so so those are some of the reasons um, why you might want to go for an open source like or an open source project. Of course, this is different from like your pet project, um, but I'm just trying to show you that it is doable um, in a in a business environment. It might even be like uh, it might be desirable in an in a business environment for apps like this for an internal project that you know, it's not super mission critical. It's a great sort of celebration piece. It's a um, almost like a, an example of uh, your culture as a company and, uh, you know, showcasing um, your talent too. But not just like that, not just that. Um, it's not about boasting only. It's also about building a seriously good piece of software, trying our hardest to, to uh, you know, get better, and uh, do a good job, right? So that's just the preamble. Um, hopefully this project is going to stay open source, like, uh, well, may maybe even open source, but hopefully at least open source, like. Um, again, um, we're going to talk about architecture, clean architecture, software architecture in general. We're going to talk about uh, different decisions. Uh, we might even... Uh, look at some pull requests uh, to to see like what people are doing, why it's done like that. Um, we can have some. Uh, I'm planning on making a couple of videos about code review culture and how you can get better at, at uh, reviewing code and how you can uh, give people feedback without seeming without sounding too aggressive, let's say or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's that. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I know this was, again, a fairly rambly, long video. Um, again, I, I swear we're going to dive into technical code stuff. We're going to dive into C Sharp very, very soon. Yeah, you know, and if you, I don't want to spoil anything, but maybe, uh, wink, wink, we might even get uh, get to some uh, React. Woo! Isn't that exciting? <laughs> um, just so we can have the full package. All right. But seriously, guys, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out some of the links in the in the description. Hopefully, the uh, um, uh, the Linus's law and uh, our Discord link. Um, one last time, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you guys uh, in the next video.